Apple has made some slight changes to this year's iPhone. This iPhone 12 Pro isn't for everyone. If you currently have iPhone 11 Pro or 11 Pro Max, I don't believe you're going to appreciate this update in terms of features. The iPhone 11 series is still very solid compared to the 12 series and these are the changes I mentioned in this video about the 12 Pro. If it's not meaningful enough for you to upgrade, then don't go for it. If you have any iPhones before the 11 series, then this video may be for you. So yeah, I just saved you a lot of time. So the real question is, what has really changed with this year's iPhone 12 series? And the first thing that really changed to me was the design. Even though it's an older iPhone 4 and 5 design, it's still a new welcome change. The 12 Pro to me feels like the most premium model of smartphone Apple has ever made. From the boxy design to the stainless steel glossy finish on the edges, the 12 Pro screams quality and reminds me of that vintage iPhone 5 design that we all loved. All of this year's iPhones 12 has Apple's new ceramic shield coating where they claim that it's four times more drop resistance than any other iPhone. But personally, I've seen those videos on YouTube and yeah, you definitely need to put a case on this thing and also a screen protector. The Pro model of the 12s keep the same frosted back glass design which limits fingerprints unlike the regular 12 which has a glossy back. But don't think we've escaped the fingerprints on this thing because remember those luxury glossy side I've just been talking about. Yeah, after a couple of caseless use, you'll see tons of fingerprints on this thing and it will start to look ugly. But it's easy to wipe off and if you have a case on it, it's not going to be a big deal. But for all those caseless persons, just know that fingerprints on this thing is real. But the biggest improvements to me aside from the design this year are the new cameras. And just to emphasize that, this entire video has been shot on iPhone 12 Pro from A rolls to B rolls. So yeah, this iPhone 12 Pro could shoot Dolby Vision HDR and it drastically improved the video quality. But personally, I couldn't test this because I don't have the means to edit such high and high quality video with this new format and everything. It will be a pain. It takes up a lot of space. And it takes a real pro or just someone who knows what they're doing to understand how to calibrate the curves in post to get good looking image. So as I said before guys, there's three cameras at the back. I'm not really sure what I'm looking at right now. I'm not sure if I'm looking at the lens or what. This, like it's really confusing. But on the top pro, we have an ultra wide, a wide angle and also a telephoto camera which are all 12 megapixels. Even the selfie camera is 12 megapixels and they look amazing. The iPhone 12 Pro has more to offer than the 12 when it comes to photography thanks to the third telephoto lens and also the lighter sensor. It was first introduced to the 2020 iPad Pro models and now it's on the 12 Pro. The lighter scanner opens a gate of whole new possibilities for AR and gaming in augmented reality as well. It allows us to basically create 3D models of anything you want to point it towards and now even allows us to measure our friend's height. So if all those friends you have always lie about their height, just whip out that 12 Pro and the lighter scanner caught them lacking. <laughs> but seriously, the lighter scanner is something really useful in terms of how it measures 3D depth. So for me personally, I always whip out my, my iPad 2020 if I want to measure stuff in my room because I tend to move around a lot of stuff. I get new furniture a lot and I work in a small space. So having the luxury to have a device that could accurately measure centimeters, inches, stuff like that so you could bring in new furniture, supper, old furniture without coming in and saying, damn, this can't fit here and there. Obviously you could use a tape measure, but just to have that handy, accurate measuring like inside your phone, which you always have, you always have your phone. I'm not sure who always walk around with a tape measure, but yeah, the lighter scanner to me is a game changer. So what if you don't really care about measuring stuff? The lighter scanner also helps in improving portrait shots with a nice blur background and helps drastically when it comes to shooting portrait mode in low light. So something the regular iPhone 12 cannot do. All in all, the 12 Pro is the right choice for smartphone photographers that want more flexibility when shooting and editing photos, but prefer a phone that's cheaper and smaller than the Pro Max. But don't be fooled, the Pro Max is reportedly going to have a larger camera sensor for the first time in a long time. It's going to have sensor shift image stabilization which in turn will result in a better image quality. It's gonna have a bigger screen, 
a bigger battery so if you only wanted to buy the best 12 pro model the 12 pro max is going to be the one that you should buy but as of now the 12 pro max is not yet available for purchase so make sure you guys subscribe to the channel so you know when i receive that device in for review the screens so the screens have also been improved they now have a slightly larger aspect ratio without making the actual phone bigger they done that by making the bezel smaller of course so the new super retina xdr oled displays looks amazing of course watching youtube videos on here on netflix is a joy and if you're coming from an iphone to lcd display like the iphone xr or the 11 you'll notice a difference with the quality on the screen since oled screens normally has a sharper image more vibrancy and contrast and in general just offer a way better viewing experience for the 11 pro series users there's nothing much here in terms of screen upgrades as the 11 pro uses an oled screen as well so what i really wanted to see in this year's 12 pro models was a 120 hertz refresh rate screen or an in-display fingerprint reader but we didn't get that and honestly at this point i don't really care anymore i mean there's other companies out there in the android world making silver screens foldable displays, pop-up cameras, in-display, front-facing cameras, all that stuff. Now, I'm not saying Apple needs to replicate anything like this, but I'm just saying that since the iPhone 10 back in like 2017, there hasn't been nothing that really changed in terms of overall design. I mean, the design changed this year, but they, they technically went back to the iPhone 5's design. But I'm just saying that for a pro model device, I think it's just missing a few features I've come to really appreciate on flagship Android devices. If there's one wish for me to have a feature on this device, it'd be to embed the Touch ID on the power button, just like they did with the iPad Air. It would have been so useful, especially in times like this where we have our mask on all the time and having to take down the mask in public places, look up at the phone just to get Face ID. If we had that Touch ID embedded in the power button, it'd been a game changer, but... All right, so another thing that has changed and Apple has emphasized it so much is 5G. 5G is another big thing this year with all iPhone 12s. So the mini, the 12, the 12 Pro, the 12 Pro Max, they all support 5G. But does your carrier or area you're living in support true 5G? Here in Canada, we don't have that millimeter wave 5G speed that Americans have. And instead, we have the regular, regular old 5G speeds. And I've tested it here in the GTA area. And the results are all over the place. So knowing me guys, Curious George, I did a couple tests on LTE and also 5G. So LTE inside is on the left and LTE outside is on the right. As you can see the speeds are kind of weird because outside we got 323 download on LTE on the right side as you can see. And I did the same test on 5G and I got lesser speeds outside on 5G versus LTE. So that's kind of weird. I think the upload speeds sometimes tend to be faster on 5g but download for me is super super iffy and yeah let me know down below in the comments what you guys think about 5g so with all that 5g stuff we have to look at battery life and it's been okay for me with the 12 pro but when you switch on to that 5g it's night and day for the battery life the iphone 12 pro can last for me a full day on single charge living up to apple's claim of 17 hours of battery life after almost 16 hours of use the 12 pro had 13 percent of its battery left but on cellular i get around nine hours at 5g speeds and 11 hours with lte so charging is also good we have a 20 watt fast charger it boosts up really quickly and of course we don't get that power brick inside we have to buy it separately but we also have MagSafe this year, which is not only for charging, it applies to a bunch of new accessories that we can use on the back of the device. By using magnets, we could slap on different cases, we could use different accessories, but so far the only thing that Apple has released is the MagSafe charger, a wallet case, and also the silicone cases. Now, if you want to hear my thoughts on MagSafe, I did an entire video dedicated to MagSafe. So if you want to deep dive into that, I'll leave that video right below the like button. So the 12 Pro is a very solid device, the fastest smartphone, the A14 chipset, the best camera money can buy in a smartphone in my opinion. But for me to feel like I'm upgrading to the best iPhone, I think I'd have to wait for the 12 Pro Max. But yeah, most people will be fine with the 12 in my opinion, I assume. Though if you jump up from that 64 gigs 
I do not recommend you guys buying a 64 gig model unless you have everything stored in your cloud. And if you go for the $849, 128 gig version, you're only $150 away from the iPhone 12 Pro. So if you still have last year iPhone in your pocket, I think you could safely sit these two out for this year. But for people who just loves to grab all the latest stuff from Apple, all the new iPhones everywhere, we still have to wait and see what the big brother and the little brother has to offer, which is the iPhone 12 mini and the iPhone 12 Pro Max respectively to finally make that rational decision. So yeah, this entire video was shot and recorded on the iPhone 12 Pro. So if you enjoy the content, drop a like, subscribe if you're new, share with your friends. And this is also a great test of the video quality. You guys probably saying, oh Siobhan, you didn't post any videos. The entire video was shot on the 12 Pro. So yes guys, as always, love, peace, and tweaks. Signing out.